Okay, so in this video, this will be our last video on the squeeze theorem, um, we want to establish the following claim. We want to show that the limit as x goes to 0 of sine x over x is equal to 1. Okay? Uh, and we're going we're gonna to use this same sort of setup that we use. So here's that diagram that we had for, for showing that, well, sine x is always less than or equal to x. We use that to show that the limit um, of sine as x goes to 0 is 0. From there, we showed that sine can always be evaluated by direct substitution. Okay. Now, what we've done is we, we've kind of, we've tacked on this little piece here, right? We've extended the triangle a little bit to this vertical side. And now we make a similar triangles argument, right? This triangle is similar to the bigger one. Here, these are the side lengths for that triangle, right? 1 sine x cos x. Now, this one, we know that the bottom has length 1 because that's the radius of the circle, right? We're interested in the length of this side, but we know from similar triangles that the ratio of these sides must equal the ratio of those sides. And so we know exactly what goes in here. Sine x over cos x, that's tan, right? So this is tan of x, okay? So from the diagram, what we establish is that sine of x is less than or equal to x, less than or equal to tan x. And, and again, we're doing this right now for, for x sort of, you know, between 0 and 1. Um, if, you're, if you're dealing with negative x, you can rely on the fact that all three of these functions are odd functions of x, and so they all behave the same under a sign change, and you can use some symmetry to get the argument on the other side, right? You just kind of flip the diagram. Okay, so we get here, and, and we, want to, we want to use this to somehow say something about sine x over x. We would like, we would like to have that in the middle. Um, well. What we can do, of course, one thing we can certainly do is we can say that tan x, well, tan is, is sine x over, over cos x. And, well, it's not yet clear how to get sine x over x, but certainly I can see how to get x over sine x. I divide all the way through here by, by sine. We're in the first quadrant, so it's sine is positive. We can do that. So sine x over sine x is just 1 less than or equal to x over sine x. And then we have 1 over cos x. Okay, um, so we, again, we have this inequality. All the quantities are positive. Um, so we can take reciprocals. And if you take reciprocals um, for numbers that are positive, the inequalities will all reverse. So, so that means that cos x is less than or equal to sine x over x, which in turn is less than or equal to 1. And again, if you, if you choose to kind of flip things over, look at x less than 0, you can proceed through the same argument. You will end up at the exact same inequality. So it works for both positive and negative x. Right? Um, you can, in fact, plot these. If you, if you go to a computer and you ask a computer to plot, you're going to see this exactly, right? So you're going to see here's, here's y equals 1, right? You're going to see that cosine function coming in. y is equal to cos x. And if you plot sine x over x, you're going to find that you get something like this right? in between. This, this bit out here is, is certainly not quite correct, but you get something along these lines. Okay, So you do actually see that, you know, that squeezing going on, that sandwiching going on. Right? And, and so why is this true? Well, this is true since, since we have that sine x 
over x is always sandwiched between cos x and 1. And we know that the limit as x goes to 0 of cos x, we saw this in a previous video, that this limit is 1. And of course, 1 is also the limit of the constant function 1. Right? So this is direct application of the squeeze theorem. f of x is cos x, g of x is sine x over x, h of x is 1. Right? The function we want is squeezed in between those two. The ones on the outside, they both have limit 1. So the one in the middle has to have limit 1 as well. Okay? So this, this result, which you know, we, we presented as sort of you know, it's a bit of a mystery, right? Why do we get this result, the sine x over x? Um, you know, it's, it's an interesting example to start with because it's not a limit that you can do by direct substitution. It's not a limit that you can handle using these algebraic techniques that we looked at a few videos ago. Um, you, need, you need sort of more powerful tools to actually really rigorously convince yourself that yes, indeed, this limit is 1. Um, the other reason we care about this is that this limit is going to be sort of a, a keystone result once we get to derivatives and we want to calculate derivatives of trig functions. Um, without this limit, we won't be able to establish any derivative rules for trig functions. With this limit, we're going to get all of them. Okay. Um, and again, one final word of warning. None of this works if we're not in radians. Okay. If we're not in radians, then that arc length formula doesn't work, right? We have to make some adjustments. There's going to be like a pi over 180 showing up somewhere along the way, right? Um, this limit won't be, won't be equal to 1, right? Um, and so you'd have to make that adjustment. So the, the, the easiest way to deal with this is to just agree that we don't ever work in degrees. If we're doing calculus, we always stick to radians.